Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, here's LaGuardia Airport. Hey, where's that man going with your suitcase? We'll meet him again where we check in. Oh, I'm always very suspicious about people who go running off with my suitcase that way. I always take God to say goodbye to it and that I'm never going to see it again. You'll see it again. Don't worry. How do you know? Because that's the way it's arranged. I know it's arranged that way, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen that way, does it? Look, darling, the airline people have it all worked out, just so it will be arranged that way. What? I don't know what. You've got me so confused, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't see why you're so excited, David. You told me all night that Chicago isn't really very far. It's just like going to Bronxville or... Where is Bronxville, anyway? Bronxville is in Westchester County. Mm. Why do I fall for these questions? Now, just tag along with me, and when I talk to official-looking people, I'll be very happy if you'll try, try not to interrupt. I'll try. That's a step in the right direction. Maybe I should leave home more often. You leave home once every day, and that's enough for both of us. Say, David, let's start saying goodbye. Goodbye. Is that all? You have another ten minutes? My watch was wrong. It's only seven by that clock over there. Only seven minutes? That isn't fair. I had ten minutes of goodbye already, and now I've got one, two, three minutes left over, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Save it for the next time I go away. There isn't going to be a next time, is there? No. Next time, you won't be sick. Dr. Williams won't mind if I roll you up in a blueprint and take you along. I'm not sick now, David. Can I come along? You're not coming, period. Attention, please. Flight 239 for Washington, Winston-Salem, Savannah, Jacksonville, and Miami. Now ready for loading at gate 7. Is that you? Didn't you hear what they said? Washington, Winston-Salem, that's in the south. You think Chicago's down south? I thought it was on the other side of the Mississippi, isn't it? I think you're thinking of the Swanee, and it isn't. Oh, this is exciting. You know, I'd like to come here sometime when you aren't going away so I could really enjoy it. You might find it very educational. Where are you hurrying to now? I'm uh, giving up your geography lesson, and I'm going over there to check in. Where? What do you have to do that for? So the airplane people know I'm here. Can't they just see it when they look at you? I don't know why everything has to be so complicated. It has to be complicated so they know that the plane isn't overloaded when they try to take off. How could it be overloaded? I thought there were just so many seats. Are you sure you've never been up in an airplane? Quite. I can't quite believe that anyone could ask such ignorant questions without knowing the answers. I don't think I ever bothered to say so, but I was the first woman to fly to the moon. Do tell. How was the cheese? Green. Why are you standing in this line? This is the checking in line. My suitcase will be along in a minute. They're, They're going to weigh it. You really think it's going to find us? It's a very intelligent baggage. It's full of books and blueprints. Attention, please. Announcing flight 647, first section for Boston. Now loading at gate 7. Is that yours, David? Not unless the wind is stronger than I think it is. It's hard for me to believe that there's strong winds way up in the sky. It looks so quiet and stately. David, are you sure you're going to be all right? Now look, darling, it's it's just like taking a streetcar. It's awfully high up for a streetcar. They uh, build them high nowadays. Oh. Say, you're not going to be silly about this, are you? No sillier than you are for not taking me to Chicago in the first place. I didn't tell you to be a hero the other day and nearly get yourself in trouble. And I certainly didn't put Dr. Williams up to ordering you to stay at home. You just wanted to go sailing off to Chicago all by yourself like a hawk or something. More like an eagle. Golden eagle. Just be sure you don't come back like a bald one. (laughs) (laughs) Impossible. I'm only going to be away a couple of days. That's what you said yesterday. 
But your suitcase looked awfully big when you packed it this morning. Now, here's the checking in line. Where is the suitcase? The suitcase? It'll be there when we're at the head of the line. Announcing flight 986, nonstop for St. Louis. Now loading passengers at gate four. Nonstop to St. Louis. Now, that, that isn't it either. Good morning. Oh, good morning. I'm David Norton. I have a reservation on the 945 for Chicago. Good morning. Good morning, miss. Oh, it's all right. We're together. You also are booked on the 945? Oh, no. But I wish I was. Were. Were. One reservation for Chicago on flight 644. Name of David Norton. She's... One moment, please. Where's she going? She's gone. She went to check up on things, I suppose. Are you sure it isn't going to be too windy? Oh, I wish you were taking a streetcar. If I were, you wouldn't be seeing me again for two months. That wouldn't matter. After two days, I won't be able to feel anything anyway. <laughs> Announcing the arrival of Flight 543 from the Azores in Lisbon, with connecting flights from Paris, Rome, and Marseille. That's not me either. Will they tell everybody when you come back, or don't they care about a little thing like Chicago? Mm, they will, if they know you're listening. It's going to be fun. What happened to the girl we were talking to? She's, she's disappeared. They always disappear. Wasn't she sort of icy? Hush up now. Here she comes. Uh, Mr. Norton, I'm afraid there's been some mistake. The reservation desk has no record of your reservation. They haven't. I'm sorry. Reservation says that we're without a vacancy on 644. The earliest we can get you off to Chicago is 11.50 on flight 12.36. That's two hours. What a wonderful goodbye we're going to have. Hello. But that won't do. I'll, I'll have to be in Chicago for a one o'clock conference. Why don't you have it at one o'clock next Monday so I can go with you? Isn't there anything you can do? I'm sorry, Mr. Norton. Well, of course, Mr. Norton, there's a possibility your reservation is on another line. I just assumed that it was on this one. I believe that Universal, just across the terminal, has a flight 654 at 948. Perhaps your reservation is with them. It must be. But look at that line in front of their desk. I, I, I'd never get through it in time. <laughs> I believe I can take you through the line, Mr. Norton. But you'll have to hurry. I, I, I didn't think you could do that. Oh, I'm just going off duty, and I'll be happy to do it. For you. David, wait for me. We still haven't said goodbye. And at the last minute, we'll be so busy we'll forget to. I won't forget. Right now, we've got to keep up with our... Damsel in distress? No, that's wrong. You're the damsel in distress. <laughs> or a reasonable facsimile. Funny, I didn't think she was the type to help just any old damsel in distress, did you? Just tall, dark, and masculine ones. Mm, well, if you really want to make a point of it... I don't see why you're so embarrassed, David. Embarrassed? Who's embarrassed? I'm proud you're the kind of man other women want to help out of trouble. I wouldn't want you any other way. Only don't get into too much trouble, darling. Now, Chloe, you don't be ridiculous. I don't see why you should get so upset just because your own wife says you're a very handsome man. And you're especially attractive when you're distracted, if you know what I mean. Claudia, please. Announcing the departure of Flight 690 for Los Angeles. Passengers now loading at Gate 8. No, that isn't me. Are you sure? I suppose you want me to parachute out when the plane goes over Chicago. Did they let you? All I want to know now is whether they'll let me on board. Now we're all alone except for several thousand other people. And maybe, David, this is a good time to start saying goodbye. Perfect. Goodbye, darling. Is that all you're going to say? It's a beginning. It doesn't sound like a beginning. Are you going to miss me? What do you think? Uh, Mr. Norton, here's your ticket. Yes? Uh, but, uh, well... What about your baggage? I assume you had baggage. Baggage? I, I had a suitcase, isn't it there? I told you it wouldn't be, but I'm not going to remind you of that. It isn't there? Well, not a sign of it. Well, they must have put it over at your checking desk. You see, you haven't got such an intelligent suitcase after all. Why, it isn't even bright enough to be a half box. Announcing the departure of flight number 444. Non-stop for Chicago. Now loading passengers, gate three. That's yours, isn't it? No, miss. That, that's ours. Mr. Norton's flight won't be announced for several minutes more. Mm. Well, I've just time to attend to your suitcase. It will be checked right through for you, Mr. Norton. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope we may have the pleasure of helping you again, Mr. Norton. Ourselves. <laughs> well... Uh, the airline, I mean. Oh, yes, the airline. Well, goodbye, Mr. Norton. Uh, goodbye, miss. Uh, have a good flight. I'm afraid she thought you were my sister, my younger sister, but she was very efficient. 
I wonder what happens to the poor suitcases that don't belong to attractive men. I bet they never get on the right plane. That has nothing to do with it. She was just being helpful. Darling, I wouldn't have it any other way. Only if she hadn't been so nice, then you would have missed the plane. And no, I don't wish that either. That's better. This is the first moment we have had to breathe since we found we were standing in the wrong line. (laughs) Announcing the departure of Flight 454 nonstop to Chicago. Now loading at gate two. I know. Your hat's on crooked. Thanks. Oh, I'll fix it myself. Let let me fix it. I I don't want to be picturing you for the next two days with your hat on crooked. (laughs) Picture me without a hat on at all. And your tie. I want that to be straight, too. I'll picture you standing just the way you are, with your hands at my throat. You make me sound dangerous. You are terribly dangerous. I am? You are a menace to freedom. You take away about 98% of the fun of going to Chicago. Are you going to be terribly miserable? Object. I won't stop crying till we fly over Indianapolis, and then I'll sob all the rest of the way. I must be awful, but I'd be a lot happier if you were going to cry all the way to Chicago. I'm going to bawl all the way home. Serves you right. Are you going to dream about me? I certainly am. You have no idea how funny you look in my dreams. Your tie's still crooked. (laughs) You just fixed it. I know, but it's crooked the other way. David, hurry back. I haven't even left yet. And keep away from pretty girls on streetcars or I'll scratch all their eyes out. Tough guy, aren't you, Mrs. Norton? David, I'm afraid I'm not tough enough. Guess I'm not very tough either. Announcing the departure of flight number 694 for New Orleans nonstop. Right. Passengers now loading gate number one. You sure they haven't announced my plane yet? Positive. I certainly would have heard it. So would I. They haven't announced anything since you started looking for the suitcase, except they, they announced the other plane to Chicago a second time. A second time? I wonder... Claudia, come on. How do you know which way? It's got to be this way. It's around here. And down there. That's right. That must be where those people are. David, I think you'll make it. Barely. Well, here we are. Don't ever go away again. Here's till I get back. Now, please, don't do anything wrong. See you in 46 hours. David! We still haven't said goodbye. But, darling, I know we'll never really have to. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. What a pleasure it is to have the sort of home people love to enter. A home where hospitality beckons and good cheer prevails. Such homes are many in our fortunate land. Youngsters crowd in after school or play for an ice-cold Coke. The older generation says, have a Coke at any hour. Always sure there's a bountiful supply cooling in your refrigerator. How's your stock of Coca-Cola? Better order some today. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir, and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola, for ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause. The pause that refreshes. <laughs>